Okay, now to see if it will roll out of the workshop, thankfully. Only one thing works on this car, and that's the handbrake. So we'll be using that to hopefully slow it down so it doesn't crash into our house. Welcome back to Little Mythic Classic and a really different video today. You're going to see a lot of the cars on the channel in this video. You're also going to get familiarized with one of the next big projects on the channel. The 1999 S-Type V8, which uh, I need to swap out the engine. A couple of months ago, we had a, I think it was two videos where I tried to get it going. I had basically zero compression and a couple of cylinders and a lot of them. We got the compression levels up. We got it to start and run. Um, didn't run well. It smoked terribly. I think it has blown head gaskets or cracks or I don't know what it has and started rattling as well. So I talked to the owner, a friend of mine who has the car, and we decided let's just go down the route of a used engine. So I found one. Um, it's here in the other shop. It's going to come up here as well. Not today, I think. I think I'll move it later. Um, so it's going to be swapped out. So that's a, a project coming up really soon. However, it doesn't run. So getting that pair will be a challenge. It's uphill up here and there's a ramp in here. So that's going to be a little challenge. So you'll see later in the video how we get that up here. But before that, the 1966 S-Type needs to uh, you know, move away from here. It's completely stripped. Uh, in the last video, it's only the carpets left and the wiring loom and the front and rear window. Those are staying in for now. The car needs to move out of here. I'm going to put it down on some dollies, hopefully sort of scoot it from all the way in the back of the workshop to the front where the door is, get it out of here, and then get it down into the smaller workshop where I've sometimes worked on um, some of the cars, sometimes where this whole channel sort of started, smaller workshop down on the other side of this building, uh, which I'm turning into just a metal working workshop, so just for cutting and grinding and doing metal work. So it's going to be down there, and that's where we're going to tackle the big part of that restoration, which is all the rust. The engine from that car is staying up here, and it's going to be restored up here in the... Uh, let's call this the main workshop up here, and we'll call the other one the little workshop, just to make it easier. It's going to be restored up here, but, you know, moving that as well, it's hopefully really, really light and easy to roll. However, once again, it can't be driven, so it's going to be a little bit of a challenge. But first step is to try and get it closer to the door. So let's get over and have a look at the S-Type. So the 66 S-Type is moving down here in the little workshop and I'm going to uh, completely redo it in a different way. It's going to be a different workbench. Um, but for now, it's just going to be moved down here and I'm also going to remove all the stuff that's in there in the front. I've kind of used this workshop as a little bit of storage and always kept the car here, but I fixed some new storage, uh, another place on the farm where I'm going to store all carp parts. Uh, so they're not going to be in here. So this is just going to be a complete metal working workshop. But the Daimler's been in here for a while. Just hooked up the battery. And let's see if it starts up. It's probably been a month or so since it ran. Or, uh, no, I had it out a week or two ago for that uh, video on washing it. But it hasn't really run since then. <laughs> Battery was a little bit on the low side, but it did fire up. All the warning lights have gone out. So we go into gear. And let's try and back it out of here. seems to be running well as it should. There are some videos coming up on this car pretty soon. I have ordered some parts for it. it should arrive next week or so. I'm gonna replace the O2 sensor or the Lambda sensor because I think that is intermittently failing sometimes and that's causing the check engine light. Um, I really think it is that. So that's gonna be replaced. Also gonna swap out the tires on it. And we're also going to have a look at why the heat doesn't really work. The heat works, but the fans don't really work. They only really work on maximum, so I have some parts for that as well. Uh, I can swap out with some known good parts and see if it's the control modules or the fans or what's going on. So now I'm just going to put it in my other storage place and then we'll see if we can get the S-Type out of that other workshop. So here's the plan I have at least to get the S-Type out. If it works, well, we'll have to find out. 
The plan is to put it on these dollies here. I have four of them. Let's put the whole thing on dollies and hopefully be able to scoot it past here. Not bump into the XJS and then out through the door. Plus the XJS is going to end up basically where the S-Type is now but closer to the wall over there because it's going to be sitting there till the weather gets nicer and stuff out. Like it's the best card to have all the way into the workshop. Also I have a fun little project planned which involves the XJS which you we'll see in the future on the channel. It's, um, I think it's gonna be really fun, so stick around for that. Uh, that's gonna come up in the future, and that's why the XTS is going in there as well. So I'm gonna start raising up the car. We'll put it on the dollies, and let's see how easy it is to move around. I have my jack under the front cross member, so just gonna move the car up off the ground. That should be high enough to get the dollies in there. One there. One on the other side as well. Lower it down slowly now. Let's see. Okay, it landed perfect on each side. Now let's do the rear. All right, so I'm gonna lift it up just on the bottom of the rear cradle. The S-Type has the same uh, IRS, independent rear suspension cradle as the well, E-Type, XJ6, um, XJS, Mark 10, well, a lot of the jacks of this era, that's what makes it really different from the Mark II. The Mark II has just a standard live rear axle, whereas this has better and more complicated independent rear suspension. Hopefully it will be really easy to move around now. Alright, so that didn't go to plan. So the S-Type is back on its wheels to push forward. At which is being a little bit lazy, trying not to move the XJS, but we'll have to. So put a battery in that, I'm gonna drive it out. Then we'll just push the XJS or the S-Type out on its wheels because uh, on the floor in here, those dollies did not really roll really well. And this thing rolls really easily on the wheels. So it's gonna be hopefully a lot easier. Okay, now to see if it will roll out of the workshop, thankfully. Only one thing works on this car, and that's the handbrake. So we'll be using that to hopefully slow it down so it doesn't crash into our house. After a lot of pushing, the S-Type is finally in, and thankfully for all of this, I had my wife to help out, who is not only incredibly kind, but also incredibly, incredibly strong. I could not have done this without her. So that one's in there. Just 
trying to warm up the XGS a little bit so that it's well I mean yes you know if you have one of these V12s they run kind of rich when you cold start them and they really do stink up the workshop so I'm going to warm up for a bit I'm gonna take put the top down so I can see what I'm doing and reverse it up into the workshop but let's just listen to it doesn't this sound nice I mean it hasn't gone for a good run for a while but it sounds really really nice I think We're gonna have to do a bit more with this car in the next driving season. Hopefully we get some car shows in 2021 and we're actually, uh, there actually be a purpose to uh, getting these cars out and enjoying them. XGS is in its new home over here in the corner, far corner of the workshop. Now it's time for the most difficult part of this whole mission. Getting the 1999 S-Type in here, the V8 one. It's just sitting outside right there. And well, it doesn't run, and it's very heavy. The next steps involves a vehicle you only see once on this channel. It is my really old but trusty tractor. <laughs> It's starting to get dark, but it's almost in now. So I have the toe straps hooked together, pulled through here, took the window out here, and back here is the concrete pad. So I'm gonna pull around with the tractor, and then we'll basically pull it in through the window. And just like that, the non-running S-Type is in the workshop. Might not have been the uh, easiest way, you think, but it really isn't that bad. You just take the window out and you can pull it with a tractor. I do have plans when the workshop is done to put a winch somewhere here. So um, I have a big piece of steel on the other side. I'm going to bolt that through this wall, mount a winch there, sort of like something you have on the, you know, on a boat trailer or something that you have on the front of a Jeep or something. And then a long cable, and then to be able to pull vehicles in here that don't run. Uh, so far, it's, I've only had to do this twice, to get the old S-Type in here, when I just built the workshop, and now to um, to get this one in here. So I'm going to disconnect things now, put the window back in, uh, roll everything down, and then I'm going to see if I can move this into place. That's where I wanted to go, more over here, so I do have a spot to get one more car in here. If I need to, so I'm gonna just put this over in the corner there, and yeah, just gotta clean up a bit. There's, it's a mess everywhere. Clean things up, and then when this thing dries off, I'm gonna clean off all the leaves and stuff from it as well. Uh, yeah, but that went really well actually. It's the next day, and I ended up not doing anything else um, more yesterday. It turned out to be pretty late, so just had a nice calm evening. But now I want to move the car more into that corner over there with the front. And then I think I'll use the dollies to move the rear just in towards that wall. So I'll have a space to pull in another car here. I always like to keep one space um, available so I can work on you know my daily driver or something like that. So since I'm alone, I've set up a chain hoist here. So this is a, um, a normal, I think it's a two ton chain hoist. And the same method as yesterday, I have that beam out there uh, held across and the window out. So um, I don't think it's going to be uh, completely like that difficult to do that with a chain hoist. It's just, it's kind of difficult to push this thing by yourself. I think the brakes are a little bit locked on. I mean, it hasn't been on the road for a year. It's been sitting you know, both inside and outside. So they're a little bit locked on and I don't want to you know, put my back out. So I'm going to just use the chain hoist. I think it's going to go really well. 
get the front in there and then I think we'll push the rear in to the wall with some dollies. That's the uh, brakes being stuck on a little bit. So yeah, there's no way I'm pushing this thing by hand. Okay, I'm gonna turn the steering wheel over a bit. Dollies are all set up on the rear wheels now. I don't have the most even floor in here. It's a good concrete floor. However, sometimes the dollies don't really roll that easily in here. But I've turned all the wheels to the correct side so they should just push easily over. That's sort of my issue with them that they don't swivel that easily. So when they get stuck on the side, it's sort of hard to make them go in the right direction. But you know, you gotta work with what you have. Um, I'm extremely grateful and I love this workshop. It's by far the nicest one I've had so far, so um, I'm not complaining or anything like that, but if the floor was a little smoother, I think they would work better. But we'll see if I can just push it to the wall. I mean, it's not much, I gotta go. It's, uh, yeah, maybe a meter and a half or something to the wall, and then it should be in place. Moment of truth. That went really easily actually. So if the wheels turn the right way in the dollies, it's no problem pushing a car by myself. So I think if I had the car on all four dollies with the wheels turned the right way, let's say I want to move it backwards now, that would be no issues at all. So that's maybe what I will do uh, when I have to start working on this car to just move it backwards a little bit. I do plan on starting this car, working on this car in the next couple of days. So let me know in the comments down below if you're excited about seeing that. I'll let you know a little bit what's gonna happen. So the engine in this thing is, it's ruined. At least that's what I think. Um, but we're swapping it out. I have a good used engine I got from a salvage yard. I've heard it run on video and it's, um, it's good. It has good service history, relatively low mileage. However, we are doing a few things to the engine before it goes in here. It is a 4 liter V8 as well. It's also from 1999. It's also the twin sensor, so it is the correct engine. However, it's from an XJ, it's from an X308, which means it has a different intake. It has different valve covers even, because the, uh, the place where they fill oil is differently. These fill over here, and I think that the other ones fill somewhere up here. So I'm gonna swap over the valve covers. I'm also going to probably swap over the sump, because I've heard that they're different, but I have no idea, so when we have both engines out, I'm going to have a look at that. Also, because we have the other engine out, the new one, we're going to have a look and see if the timing chain tensioners have been replaced. I don't think that they have on it, um, but I, have, I just had a quick look inside and it looked like the old style. So I've ordered new timing chains, uh, things for it, so we're going to replace that as well. We're going to replace most gaskets, but I don't see any leaks on it, but you know, valve cover gaskets and such things are going to be replaced. And hopefully it's going to lift in here pretty easily. I've checked in the manual and it seems to be that the easiest way to do it is to leave the transmission in the car. So undo the bell housing bolts and, you know, a bunch of hoses, a bunch of connections. It's lots of steps, lots of things have to get out of the way. I do believe that the front of the car can stay intact. They don't have to remove the radiator and such, but I might remove those things just to give me a little more room just because... Um, I don't want the engine to slip or something and then, you know, smash into the radiator and ruin that because that seems to be fine on the car. So I may be removing a little bit more than you have to, but that's just because I don't want to have to break, you know, break any reservoirs or anything around you because it is, it is a pretty tight engine bay. As you can see, there's not a lot of space. So then hopefully this engine will lift out. We'll put both engines on a stand or we do have one stand. So one engine on the stand and the other one... Uh, sitting or hanging next to it in the engine crane and we'll move things over and hopefully that will go pretty smoothly So let me know in the comments down below if you're excited about seeing that 
The only thing I'm going to do with the car right now is I'm going to remove all the leaves here. It sat for a week outside next to a tree. I'm going to remove all of those and I'm going to leave all the windows and sunroof open just to air it out. It was raining really heavily that week, like tremendous, tremendous rain and thunderstorm. So uh, it seems pretty dry inside, but I'm just going to let it, you know, fully dry out in here. And th that's what we're going to do with the car right now. So let's head on over to the small little workshop and have a look at the old S-Type. Hello chickens. Are you going to be quiet for this part? <laughs> Guess not. Alright, so here is the little workshop and the S-Type is in here. Came in yesterday and went pretty, pretty well. Once again, I'm really, really thankful for the help from my strong wife. Helped me push it in here. It, it took some time, but it is finally, finally in here. And this is where it's going to stay basically until all the metal work is done. So um, a lot, a lot is going to happen in here. This is not such a big space, but it's big enough for what I want to do. It's just gonna be cutting and grinding and welding in here, and that's basically it. The space is pretty long, so I do have room for a workbench. I will be changing to a, um, a different style workbench. It will be a metal one, so I can you know clamp onto it when I weld, and probably be a smaller one. It doesn't have to be as big as this one. This is just something I put here temporarily when I moved here, and it's um, it's worked really well, but it's too big for what I need right now. And then some more tools are going to come down here. One set of the tool cabinets is going to be down here. This is a um, uh, a big uh, vacuum cleaner that you hook up to um, air-powered sanding machines. So all of that for, you know, sanding, getting all the paint off and all that will work really well. And we'll probably add some other tools down here. I do want to get a sandblasting cabinet and a few other things. So this is going to be... Um, uh, just some different restoration tools down here. We're going to put in more lights in here so it's nice and bright. Probably paint the walls white just to make it a nice place to be and put in some kind of heat source because it can get pretty chilly down here. So there is some stuff left to do on the S-Type. We have to get rid of the lights, the bumper, and what's left of the interior. So let me know in the comments down below if that's something you want to see on that video or if it's just something I should do without filming it. So uh, please let me know what you think in the comments down below. And that's it for this video, and I hope you guys really liked it, even though it was quite different to what I usually have on the channel. It's more of a vlog style slash, I guess you call it sort of a day in the life or a weekend in the life, you know, two days of moving stuff around, trying to get things organized, things that often happen behind camera. You guys usually just see, you know, when I do a project, this is what happens, but there's so much that happens around moving cars around, getting the right car in the right place on the workshop, you know, there's there's a lot that happens behind the scenes with uh, trying to get videos for you guys on this channel. And I just wanted to share uh, this moment, which was kind of a big thing with moving two cars without an engine. Or one has an engine that's really run, and well, this one's completely empty. But just those challenges and things that happen behind the scenes. So I wanted to share that with you guys, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Also, let me know if you didn't like it, because then I won't film it in the future once these sort of things happen, but I would love to hear what you guys think. So, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe. It really does help out a lot. And until next time, I'm Adam, and this was Living Effect Classic. I'll see you soon.